Every year, almost to the day, I overhaul my reef tank. I dedicate just about a full day to my aquarium. I want to make sure all of the things I've slacked on or delayed get fixed or replaced. I will replace the RODI filters, clean the skimmer, and add XT60 connectors for faster removal, clean the reactor, do a 10 gallon water change, replace all of the T5s, and replace the automatic top off float sensors. Let's start with replacing the RODI filters. As you can see, the filters are in desperate need of replacing. The current reading is 1 ppm. I purchased the Bulk Reef Supply 3-stage RODI kit. I usually purchase this during the July 4th sale. After removing the unit from the house plumbing, I begin removing all of the canisters one by one and replacing each filter. After I have finished with the filters and reinstalled, I run the unit for an hour to flush the system out. RODI filters finished. Next I will add XT60 connectors to the skimmer and give it a good cleaning. As you can see, the skimmer is in dire need of a good cleaning. I absolutely hate the unplugging process of this skimmer so I'll be adding XT60 plugs to quickly disconnect it from my apex. First I cut the cable in half, strip the cable, get the XT60 connectors ready, and then solder them on. Now the skimmer is easily removed from the system and then cleaned. Skimmer done. Now for a 10 gallon water change. Now that the skimmer is clean, behind the skimmer I've added a filter sock. Before each water change, I add a filter sock to hold all of the gunk I made from cleaning the tank. You can watch the review of this filter sock, a link is in the description. I will be changing out 10 gallons of water. And then I add salt to the water. Here's a tip. Remember to shake the salt well before each water change. While the salt is mixing, I clean the glass, and as you can see, it really needs it. For glass cleaning, I use a Flipper Nano. I do love this thing. I've had it for over a year and never needed to change the blade. After that, I clean the outside glass with RODI water and a paper towel. Mm -hmm. 
After both sides of the glass are cleaned, I test the new water with a refractometer. I keep my salinity at 1.025 or 1.026. The water is 1.026, so now it's time for a water change. I place a small pump in each compartment in the sump and blast a detritus with a baster. Once 10 gallons of water is removed, I start pumping the new water back in. Water change done. Now let's clean the reactor. This do-it-yourself reactor grows all sorts of algae, and it does a fantastic job. It's easily cleaned by skimming off the top layer and trimming the Kato if needed. Reactor cleaned. Now let's replace the T5s. First I start off by turning the T5s off. Once they have been cooled down, I begin the removal process. and then begin adding them back one by one. Once they are installed, I turn the T5s back on and make sure they are all working correctly. The new T5 combo from the front is Blue Plus, Purple Plus, Coral Plus, Aqua Blue Special, Blue Plus, and Blue Plus. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison. T5's done. Let's move on replacing the ATO sensors. As you can see, these are in pretty bad shape and need to be replaced. With so much stuff growing on them, it actually lowers the water line in time. I get the new sensors ready by first splicing the ends of the cables. I have to remove the pipe from the cabinet by removing one screw. This is from one full year of use. One sensor is longer than the other one. The extra plastic nut allows one sensor to be lower in the water. The sensor that is longer on the right is for the low water which activates the ATO to turn on, and the other is for the high water which activates the ATO to shut off. My ATO mount is custom and is made from a piece of PVC and a piece of ABS plastic. Installation is easy. I made sure the wiring was correct on my apex and the ATO sensors are done. Oh. 
I still have a few hours of daylight left. Let's go for an adventure. <laughs>